another tutorial. If you've been wondering where I have been and you haven't watched my live streams or anything like that, then watch till the end of the video, I'll give you a brief update. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute wrist warmers and I'm going to put them on for you because that's what I do. Ta -da -da. Wrist warmers, yeah. It's the perfect time of year for wrist warmers because it's starting to get cold. They're really easy to make, they are ideal for people who have never crocheted before, um, which I know sounds crazy, but they're super simple. The reason that today's video is up has been uploaded on a Friday and not on Sunday is because it's a very amazing collab with some lovely people here on YouTube. We've decided to go for an autumnal Halloween theme, and so, autumnal wrist warmers. But they're making a wide variety of different crafts and videos, so be sure to check them out. Rachel from Simply Duck Designs is showing you how to make these amazing duct tape trick or treat bags. Alyssa Ruby is going to show you some ingenious last minute DIY Halloween costumes. Ali from Pastella28 is showing you the seven stages of fall slash autumn room decor. And Sarah from So Craftastic is showing you how to make some creepy spooky Halloween soap. Links to all of their videos can be found in the description box below as usual as well as all the other links that I think might be necessary. But yes, if you've never crocheted before, you will have no problem making these. It's very logical. And it's my own pattern. I've never shared my own crochet pattern with you before but it's been on Ravelry for a while so I thought I will share it with you. And I've written it in both US and UK terminology because that's what I do. Anyway, you didn't click on this video to watch me waffle on, let's just get on with the tutorial shall we? So to make these fingerless gloves slash hand warmers, wrist warmers, whatever you call them, you are going to need some double knit yarn. This is the yarn that I like to use, it's just a really nice, cheap, 100% acrylic yarn. Not sponsored, obviously. Um, and it comes in really nice colours. You're also going to need a 4mm crochet hook. You're going to need a darning needle. It doesn't want to focus on it, but fine. It's a darning needle. And a pair of scissors. Now we don't need the needle and the scissors for now, so let's just get on to the yarn. So to start with, we are going to make a slip knot. To do this, you are going to twist the yarn around your hands to form a loop, and then pull through like this. Then we have a slip knot. I'm just going to adjust the focus. So you are going to insert your hook into the slip knot and pull it nice and tight. And we are going to chain 35 stitches. So to chain, we are going to yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through the loop. And you're going to do that 35 times. And I'm going to skip ahead because you do not need to watch me do this 35 times. So I have chained 35 stitches, it's very nice, and now we are going to do a UK double crochet, which is a US single crochet in the chains across. To do this we are going to skip the first chain, we don't want to use that one, we want to use the second one here. You're going to insert your hook into the chain, yarn over your hook, pull it through the loop, so you have two loops on your hook, yarn over again and pull through both of those loops. So then you go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So you're going to continue to do this the whole way across for a total of 34 stitches. Uh, like I say, it's US single crochet, UK double crochet, because countries decide to have different terminologies and make it very confusing for those of us who want to crochet. Once you get to the end of the row, you should have something that looks a little like this and it's all curled up and annoying you think, oh, I've ruined everything, but you haven't, it's fine. Now we're going to chain two, so yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So you chain two, you physically turn your work, so you're working back along this way. We're going to be doing UK trebles, which is a US double crochet. So yarn over, we're going to skip this first stitch, we're not going to go into this one, we're going to go into the second one, and if you look at these little V's that are on top of the crochet, we're going to go underneath both of the parts of the V, if that makes sense. 
So you put your yarn over, as I said. So yarn over your hook, you insert into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, so you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two of those loops, so you've got two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And then yarn over again, ready for the next stitch, go into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, so three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And you're going to do that the whole way along and I will be back towards the end of the row and show you how to do that end. So just about to crochet the last stitch and then on this end you want to go into this chain here. So yarn over, we're going to go into the chain and that's just the chain one that the chain two, oh no, the chain one that we did, or the chain that we did at the beginning of the row. So we're just going to do a treble into that. And then you are going to chain two once more. Turn your work, yarn over, go into the second stitch of the row and do another row of trebles all the way across. Then at the other end, once again, just like before, you are going to go into that chain at the end of the row. But I will show you that once I get there. So we have, I've just done my last stitch, we have our chain two here from the previous row. So I'm just going to insert or put my hook into the top stitch of the chain two. So the second stitch I suppose you'd say. And I forgot to do a yarn over, so that's super useful. There we go. And finish it off with another treble before chaining two and going back. So you're going to repeat this step of a row of trebles, chaining two, turning, blah, 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 until you have a total of 21 rows. But on that last row, don't chain two. But I'm obviously gonna skip ahead, so you can just watch it and find out what to do. So just keep going backwards and forwards with your treble crochet or your US double crochet um, until you have a total of 21 rows in your wrist warmer. So I'm gonna get on with this and when you next see me, I will have all those rows done so you don't have to sit and watch me do them because I doubt that will be a very interesting video. So I have all 21 rows in total done. I have just finished the final row. I'm going to chain one, yarn over, pull through. I'm gonna turn my work again, and then I'm going to do a US single crochet or a UK double crochet the whole way across. Once again, same as before, skipping that first stitch and going the whole way across. And then at the end, um, you're going to double crochet into the second chain of the row. And a double crochet is you insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through. And you're just going to do that the whole way across and in that chain, just like you have done for the rest of the wrist warmer. So I've crocheted into that last stitch. You're going to leave a nice long end of around 70 centimeters. It's probably too long, but oh well. Um, and then to finish off, you're going to yarn over and then pull that yarn all the way through. Now you're ready to sew together your glove. So grab your needle and thread that like so. Then you're going to fold it in half. And I tend to sew it together using whip stitch. You can slip stitch it together if you prefer, but I like to whip stitch. Um, and with all whip stitch is, the yarn is coming out of the back piece. So insert into the front piece and through the back piece. And then over and through the front piece and back piece again and you're just going to keep doing that. So I sewed down the next five 
trebles, so six rows in total. So just keep whip stitching down for the next five rows, or five rows of trebles, I suppose I should say, or five rows of double crochet, if that is the terminology you're more familiar with. So once you have sewn the, that part together, I'm just going to sew down the side of the, not joining the edges together, but just to get my yarn further down. There is no way that I, no specific way that I do this. I just try to keep the yarn hidden and look like it's supposed to be there, if that makes sense. And I do that for the next four rows. But you can obviously um, change the size of the thumb hole to fit your hand. That is the joy of making your own wrist warmers, fingerless gloves, whatever you want to call them. And you can be sure to try it on and make sure it still fits and all of that fun stuff. There we go. And then you're going to join your work back together and continue to whip stitch down the rest of your glove. And then all you have to do to finish off your work is to sew your end in, which is so easy to do and it just requires going back and forth through the stitches until the end of your yarn is nice and secure. And you're going to do this to both the, the working thread that you've just been using and also this tail end as well that we started off with. Make sure you sew back um, a fair amount so you know that it's all secure and nothing's gonna come undone while you're wearing them out and about because that would be a sad, sad day. And once you have made this glove, all you have to do is make the other in the exact same way. Super duper simple. The easiest gloves you are ever going to make. And then they're ready to wear to keep your hands and wrists nice and warm. I didn't quite time this well enough, the cathedral bells are going. So yes, now you know how easy it is to make these of your very own. If you have any questions, as always, don't forget to ask. Links to all of my social media can be found in the description box below, so be sure to click down there. Head on over, follow me, like me, do whatever you want over there, as long as it's nice. I don't want anyone being mean, all right? If you do happen to make your own wrist warmers, be sure to show me a picture using the hashtag the corner of craft. It would mean a lot to me. I want to see that. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up. Your support means the world to me. And why not hit subscribe? I post new craft tutorial here in the corner of craft most Sundays. I can't say every Sunday now. I've had a couple of weeks off. But I'm going to try really hard to get one up. At least one more up before Halloween. Someone's asked for a brick stitch pumpkin. I already have a pattern made for it. I had it planned in my head. I just need to do it. Don't forget that this video was a collab with some very lovely people, so be sure to check out their videos. Like I say, all of their links can be found in the description box of this video, so be sure to check those out. Show them some love, show them you care. If you're from their channel, hey, I'm a little bit awkward. But I think that's everything I have to say regarding the tutorial, so if you've just come to watch the tutorial, thank you so much for watching. Stick around if you want to find out where I've been, but if you're not interested in that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. But if you're sticking around, thanks for sticking around. Um, basically, I just needed some time off of YouTube. We all need a holiday every now and then, and I know it... Basically, I was running myself into the ground and I wasn't really enjoying the videos I was putting out. So, I had a break. 
I needed a break and I had a break and I much enjoyed it. I've been very into knitting. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you would know this. So I've not been completely gone from social media. I've still been posting on Instagram and Twitter and such. Um, but I just needed a YouTube break. I needed to cleanse my creativity. I needed to make some stuff because I wanted to make it, not make some stuff because I felt like I had to make it. And yes, I don't know. I think I just got a bit like, ugh. But I feel much better now, which is good. Um, I'm going away to Barcelona on Monday and we're going there for uh, four or five days. And then we are going on to England to see family for a few days. So I won't be posting a lot of videos. I'm going to try and record a crafty chat in Barcelona, fingers crossed. Um, and I'll try to vlog there as well. But I'll try really hard to get a video up in that Sunday bracket um, between those two weeks. So there should be a video coming out, but I'm gonna try really hard. Um, but that's basically where I've been. I just needed some, I just needed a bit of a break. Um, but I feel much more refreshed now. It's been weird not making videos for the past two weeks. Very bizarre. You can tell I've missed it by the fact that I've been live streaming. Um, and yes, sauce for that ramble at the end. I'm thinking of switching up my channel a bit come November, um, but I'll make a separate video about that and talk to you all about that then. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, for washing. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my ramble and my slight venting. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and don't forget to make these because they're really nice and snuggly and warm and oh they're so nice. Thank you very much once again for watching and I shall see you very soon in my next video. Bye! with yet another bead weaving tutorial for you all. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have already seen what I'm going to be making, but today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute Halloween-esque skull with a little flower crown. Super cute, please excuse my unpainted nails. I am going away in five hours and need to get this edited before I paint my nails need to get my priorities sorted so this video is, comes out when you're seeing it. 